There are some big developments happening right now in the automotive world, and developments that are not necessarily positive if you are a fan of imported vehicles. In this video, we're going to talk about the news. Here in the United States since the late 1980s, imported vehicles have fallen under the Imported Vehicle Safety Compliance Act of 1988. Essentially, vehicles 25 years and older are allowed to be brought into the US even if they don't comply with federal safety and emission standards. There is a good chance that at some point or another you have come across an imported vehicle that has fallen under this Compliance Act umbrella be it a classic Mini Cooper that was imported from the UK, maybe a stunning German car that was 25 years or older, be it from BMW or Mercedes, or even some crazy French thing that was brought over on a ship. And this is where our story gets sticky, because several months ago, owners in Maine of a classic 25-year-old vehicle called the Mitsubishi Delica were told they were not allowed to drive their legally imported Delicas on the road. Now the Delica is an incredibly cool four-wheel drive van which is 25 years or older and can legally be imported here to the US. They are incredibly good off-road, very durable, and a favorite of overlanders across the United States. So joining me today to kind of help clarify the story and talk a little bit more in depth is Andy Lilenthal. Andy Lilenthal is with Crankshaft Culture. He is a long time Mitsubishi Delica owner and he's been following this story closely and closely within the community. So Andy, when did this whole JDM backlash kind of start? Talk to me about the timeline. Yeah, so uh, a few months ago, some owners in the state of Maine started receiving letters from the Bureau of Motor Vehicles in that state that simply said, uh, these vehicles are considered off-road vehicles and Maine doesn't register off-road vehicles and therefore they have to be uh, taken off the road and the plates sent in. So when the state of Maine says off-road vehicle, they're not talking about what many of us think of as of an off-road vehicle, like maybe a Jeep or a Ford Raptor or something like that. They're meaning a vehicle not designed to be used on the road. So thinking, think something like an ATV or perhaps a side-by-side. -side. These owners started getting these uh, letters and they started looking into it. And uh, basically, the, despite the fact that there's a federal 25-year import law, uh, registration is handled by the states and it's not a federal thing. So basically, if Maine decided they didn't want to allow blue cars to be registered, they could allegedly do that. Now here's where things get even more complicated because in Japan, there is a classification of vehicle called K vehicles. Now K vehicles have to follow certain regulations and specifications. And this is where my friend Larry, who owns several K vehicles, is gonna explain what that means. K cars in Japan are limited to how wide and how long they can be. Um, and then you get a tax advantage and then you get, um, uh, it's cheaper to register. Uh, but they are limited to 64 horsepower max. Many states in the U.S. currently don't allow the registration of K trucks and K vans on U.S. roads. Now you might see them on farms and ranches and college campuses, but very rarely on U.S. roads. The thing is though, the Mitsubishi Delica is not a K vehicle whatsoever. It's far too large, far too powerful, and does not meet any of the requirements to be considered a K van. This thing is big, it's like the size of a modern day minivan. There's obviously a huge breadth of JDM vehicles that are over 25 years old that people can import into the States. What was the reason that Maine initially targeted the Delica? What was the thinking there? So the original wording said that it fell under the same uh, sort of umbrella as mini trucks or K trucks. Anybody that's ever seen a Delica is, clearly these are not mini trucks. These are the size of a Toyota Sienna. This is not a small vehicle. Uh, so further pushback was was taken by a number of owners and uh, Maine sort of backtracked a little bit on that, but they said they still weren't going to allow them to be registered because uh, they basically don't have uh, federal motor vehicle safety standards uh, decals on them. So if you open up the door jam on most new cars sold in the United States, there'll be a placard about that big, it's about the size of an index card, and it says that this vehicle meets federal motor vehicle safety standards, FMVSS. Uh, and 
Apparently somebody in Maine brought their Delica in to have it inspect because Maine has a state vehicle inspection. There was no FMVSS sticker present. And uh, somebody was called in from the Maine State Police, which is apparently the governing body of the inspections. And they said, this is a no-go. And in fact, all these Delicas are no-goes. And this is where things start to get alarming because Maine is not alone. Rhode Island just banned the registration of all K cars. Not just the little K trucks, not just the little K vans, but all K cars, including stuff like the Suzuki Cappuccino, which is not a little van that you might see cruising around a ranch. It's a small, lightweight, nimble, and zippy sports car. It is 25 years and older. It can be legally imported here into the US, but the state of Rhode Island is saying no. Here is the official quote. These vehicles were not designed to be operated on North American roadways. Allowing operation would introduce into the conventional traffic mix vehicles with questionable stability and crash protection that pose a known increased crash risk and potential hazard for the vehicle operator as well as other vehicles on the same roadways. So in your opinion, are these imported JDM vehicles any more unsafe than the equivalent American spec vehicle sold here 25 years ago or older? So it, of course, depends on the vehicle, right? If, if you're looking at a Mitsubishi Monte uh, Pajero, it's literally the same thing as a Mitsubishi Montero, except you're sitting on the right-hand side, much like, say, a mail carrier. So uh, I will say this, in, in, the, uh, in terms of Delica, these vehicles were sold in the United States as the Mitsubishi van and the Mitsubishi wagon from 1987 through 1990. You could go to a Mitsubishi dealership in North America, in the United States, and buy basically a Mitsubishi, a two-wheel drive gasoline-powered Mitsubishi Delica. Yes, the bumpers were a little bit bigger to meet crash uh, safety regulations. Uh, yes, they were a gasoline and two-wheel drive only, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same vehicle. But of course, those vehicles were brought through the battery of federal testing, crash testing, EPA certification, and they have that FMVSS sticker. But otherwise, they're completely the same vehicle. So I, I have to wonder, why is it that you can register a classic vehicle such as a BMW Isetta, a classic Mini Cooper, a little tiny Messerschmitt Mini car, but you can't register a van that you happen to sit on the other side of the road. It's way bigger, way safer. And like, if we're talking about safety, well, how far do we take this? Do we do we deregister anything that doesn't have airbags? Mm -hmm. Do we deregister motorcycles? I mean, clearly motorcycles are more dangerous from a safety perspective than a Mitsubishi van from 1990. I personally think that Andy is spot on with this statement because in theory, you could import a car like this behind me, a Citroën du Chevaux into both Maine and Rhode Island and no, it isn't a K vehicle, and no, it's not a Delica, but I'd argue a car like this is far more unsafe than both of those. This one has just 29 horsepower and 602 cc's, which is far less than most K cars. Heck, the early ones made nine horsepower. Nine, that's it. And then you've got the argument, well, aren't most cars from the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, just as unsafe, if not more unsafe than a Honda Beat or a Suzuki Cappuccino or a Mitsubishi Delica? I personally think so. And what about motorcycles? And what about people driving around in super lifted trucks with giant bumpers on the front? Don't those create more of a road safety risk than something like a little tiny K vehicle or a Mitsubishi Delica? I personally think so. What are people in the community doing about the situation? And talk to me about what the JDM vehicle community, how are they responding to uh, these registrations just being pulled? Yeah, so unfortunately, the people in Maine, uh, they have two choices. They either have to sell the vehicle, and they can't sell it in the state, essentially, can't sell it to another Mainer, um, or they just take it and they take the plates off it and leave it in their driveway. Uh, could only, they could use it on private land, uh, or they are standing by hoping something will happen. So, of course, uh, it's likely somebody will have to lawyer up if they really want to fight this. And I would say that's going to be an uphill battle considering the states do have the right to enforce and, and create the, the, the laws that they would like to around registration. Uh, there is a sentiment of slippery slope. 
in the JDM community. I have three JDM four wheel drives and uh, I, I, worry about, I worry about it here on the other side of the, the country in Oregon. Uh, we don't have a visual inspection in Oregon. We do have emissions testing in certain areas uh, and my vehicles all pass that. But you know, the, the fear is that other states start adopting this. We just heard earlier this week, Autoblog broke the story that Rhode Island is deregistering K cars. So we have both Maine and, and uh, Rhode Island actively removing registration from uh, certain vehicles, primarily Japanese domestic market. But keep in mind, uh, there's plenty of other vehicles that don't have federal motor vehicle safety standards uh, from other countries. It's not just a Japanese car thing. Think about all the rovers that are up in uh, the Northeast. Uh, these are coming in from the UK. Well, those wouldn't have FMVSS stickers either. And I understand that, uh, uh, you know, there are plenty of classic vehicles that don't meet that, but those are grandfathered in. But, but really, if we're talking safety, why is it that you can register a Model T on wooden wheels for road use, but a 1994 Mitsubishi Delica space gear that weighs over 4,000 pounds and has plenty of safety equipment for the time being can't be driven on public streets. It just doesn't make any sense. It's a very slippery slope and one that I am personally very worried about because I put a lot of time and money into this classic mini. It's fully legal, it's registered, it's insured, it has its emissions test. But if states can just pull these registrations willy-nilly, could that happen to me? I mean, that's a big concern of mine. Currently, Colorado allows this car, but will it in the future if Maine and Rhode Island are setting a precedent? We'll see. Have you ever run into any issues with state police or with the DMV about uh, registering or any of that kind of uh, work? Definitely not state police. Never have any, any problem with that. All three of the vehicles, all are diesel powered, all pass our emissions here, emissions testing in Portland. Uh, the DMV is a different story. I've never run into any roadblocks that they didn't think it should be registered. Uh, but being that they're a rather unique thing to register, it sort of depends on who you get at the DMV and whether or not they're familiar with uh, foreign vehicle registration. But all three of mine went through without any major issues. Uh, it, you, know, you do, it is, a, it is a learning curve. But uh, yeah, I've never had any issues here in Oregon. Are you able to insure them? Can you get normal insurance here in the States? It depends. So uh, I have my daily driver uh, insured through State Farm. When we originally bought our 1989 Mitsubishi Delica several years ago, State Farm wouldn't touch it. But all three of my vehicles are actually insured by Haggerty. None are daily drivers, but they don't bat an eyelash and uh, they'll do agreed upon value and all that stuff. So I've actually been quite happy with that. Uh, so, uh, but there are apparently some of the more mainstream um, insurance companies that will allow you to insure uh, a JDM vehicle such as a Delta with them. Well guys, I really appreciate you watching this little news video. Please let me know in the comments section below what do you think of this issue and how are you going to respond if you live in one of those states and own a K vehicle or Delica or something that is having its registration pulled. As always, head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. Um, I think we're going to need community support to get things to change because right now I am not pleased with the direction stuff is heading.